So let's get this straight. I'm the Chamber of Commerce guy, but I love you. <laughs> I might not know you, but I can still love you. Don't get me wrong, not in some mushy, squishy kind of love way, no. I love you because I believe our purpose in life is to love and serve others. And when we combine love and service in our daily lives, we become servant-hearted. That changes how we lead our organizations, changes how we live our lives, and for many CEOs, it is a radically better way of running their companies. I have to admit, though, I don't always think this way. I have been, and at times still am, a prideful, stubborn ladder climber. But I do believe to love and serve is the most important imperative we have today, no matter where you are in your career building, no matter where you are in growing your company, this will fundamentally change everything. I wanna share with you how I got here, how other people helped me understand a deeper way to matter and an alternative to traditional leadership. Now, it all started at a very pivotal point of my young career. I was weighing multiple job offers. Some offered more money, some cooler locations. At the same time, my grandmother was in the hospital. I was a very good grandson. So I thought I'd go visit her to lift her spirits and share with her this gleaming list of impressive offers that I had. So when I finally finished rambling, or let's face it, bragging, I waited for some kind of word of praise for her soon to be very successful grandson. Now, you need to know this, Nanny was about four foot eight and tough as nails. And she looked at me and she said, don't go get too big for your britches. <laughs> that is Southern for becoming arrogant. You do not want your nanny to call you out. <laughs> it stung. And as I waited for that to sink in, she looked up at me from that hospital bed and smiled and said, it's awfully nice to be wanted, but it is far more important to be needed. Go serve where you're needed. I told you I was a good grandson, so I followed nanny's advice, and I took the only job where the executive said, we need you here. And I have followed that same advice continually. But I was still a ladder climber, and I was thinking about the next position before I could fully engage exactly where I was then. I kept telling myself I was bound for better things where I could have a bigger impact. A few years later, I was still climbing the ladder, and I had a new role, and the CEO of this global company came to visit me. Now, y'all, Brad was a giant in the corporate world. But by the time he got to sit with me that day, he'd entered that little old man stage of life, you know, where your suits are too big and your tie's too wide. But Brad didn't care about those things. He had bigger issues to tackle, right? Like literacy, um, water conservation. He was a sage, an ambassador for corporate citizenship. As we sat in my office, he wagged this long finger at me and said in this gravelly voice, as men and women of faith, we are called to engage and become committed to our communities. To love others is to serve them, and from that comes joy. That was deep. I was not ready for Brad's advice. I understood the serve my community part, but the people part and the love part, I wasn't ready for that. I told myself I did not have time for people. No, it was one thing to take a job where I was needed. It was another to have to wake up every day and think about serving all these other people. But Brad was planting a seed. He was letting me in on a secret. A few years later, still climbing the ladder, I believed that I was a servant leader. I gave talks about it. I wrote about it. But my pride and my ego were still running the show. So I gave this big, important speech, and I talked about our organization and how we were going to serve and make a difference. Afterwards, Ernest pulled me aside. Now, you know, Ernest is a big deal. He's a visionary, a, a mentor to a generation of corporate and community leaders. He built a whole culture around service. He got this. And he was about to enlighten me and call me out, too. He said, Chris, you talk a lot 
about serving others, but you never once talk about helping actual real people. Brad and Ernest understood the bigger secret, that it's about people. Businesses are just men and women that work together. Communities are neighbors that live, work, play, and pray together. The economy is made up of just hardworking men and women with their own issues. I wanted to understand this so much more. And so I've been blessed to work with thousands of executives. And I started calling former governors, CEOs, small business owners, asking them about their own experience, how they lead this type of life. I dug in deep. I did research. I wanted to know how to build a culture and a character of servant-heartedness. I didn't expect this theme, though, of values and service to run so deeply through so many executives. They were telling me the same thing that my nanny had told me 25 years ago, that businesses can do good things if we just care about other people. The other thing that I found was that at their core, all of these successful executives had an incredibly deep faith. And that faith allowed them to be intently authentic in their character, right? They were kind, they were appreciative, and they were humble. And guys, humility is critical if you want to make a difference in the lives of other people. Another little secret they told me, stop climbing the ladder long enough to look around and listen. All these impressive men and women had made service the centerpiece of their life and their business. One of those CEOs was Shan. Now, she is comfortable in her own skin, strong, compassionate, caring, the conscious of the business community. So she and I were talking about service and heart, and she said, listen, I get it. It's easy to sit behind your desk far from the difficulties of your employees. It's easy to build this wall around your business, and it's easy to climb the ladder. But when it's all said and done, have you made a difference and have you helped anyone? There was another CEO who understood the incredible impact of service and purpose. And here's the critical thing. If you serve with purpose, then you love. Yep, the chamber guy's going to talk about love again. Stick with me. I know you think that love is this squishy, soft thing. It's a really bad 80s pop song. Or it's this horrific poem you wrote to someone in middle school. No? Is I the only one? <laughs> I did that, <laughs> and I apologize. It was not my best work <laughs> at all. But that love is a feeling. It's infatuation. The love I'm talking about is when you set aside your own ego and your own wants for the needs of others. Because love does stuff. It matters. I went back and asked Ernest about his own motivation. He looked me dead in the eyes, unblinking, and said, my purpose is to love and serve the unseen and the unheard. To love and serve people you don't know, that is a powerful servant's heart. And greatness lies in the path of service. And don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about customer service. That's not seeing the person behind the sale or behind the counter. No, servant heartedness is seeing the people for where they are. They're not customers. Maybe their parents having a bad day and they need your help. They're not clients, they're your relatives or your family, and they are not employees. They are young men and women dreaming and building their careers just like I did. And by the way, for those of you thinking about the labor shortage out there, Deloitte tells us if you want to keep those young men and women, you know what they want first and foremost is to work for a company that matters and to work for leaders that care about them. So I've had all this in my head, and I'm struggling with how to put it all together and connect to the personal piece. And so I reached out to Sonny. He is a dear mentor and friend, a faith-filled corporate citizen run, created so many companies and banks. I wanted to know how he does this, how he lived this type of life. Sonny said in this sophisticated Southern drawl with all the passion that you can imagine, I just wake up every day and pray to be a blessing to one person, just to impact one life. That's not how I started my days. It is now, though. That's the, the motivation that we try to carry forward. Imagine a company or a, a classroom even where everybody wakes up every day and says, I want to be a blessing to the people I don't know. I've gotten to see that. 
It's so impressive. I've watched businesses work with landowners and conservationists to protect the gopher tortoise and preserve the longleaf pine ecosystem. I've watched CEOs so passionate about helping minority and veteran entrepreneurs, they create diversity supplier programs for them. And I've seen executives that care so much and want to change lives that they'll take their own profits and invest them into the schools and the communities where they serve. That's absolutely incredible. And I could go on and on and on, but I believe with every fiber of my being that the CEO imperative, the imperative for leaders, students, parents, family members, is to live a life of servant-heartedness. That's how you change your company from being just another business to actually a change maker and a difference maker that people want to work for. But I have one more secret to share with you. Through all of this, I've also come to realize you don't have to be a CEO to make a difference and to serve. No, you can make a difference and serve wherever you are, whatever your assignment is for the day. I've watched my wife for the last 13 years walk away from a successful multimedia career to volunteer in our son's school because she loves him, she loves his friends, she loves all those kids in the hall that she doesn't even know yet. I mean, I get to see love and service up close and personal every single day. So the question becomes, are you stubborn like I am and will take this long to figure it out? Or will you become a servant-hearted difference maker where you are? I invite you to follow the wise counsel of my nanny and all those other CEOs too, and to take your servant heart into the office, into the public square because we desperately need your servant heart.